Welcome to the Chapel of Sacred Mirrors. Offering my devotional portrayals of the universal human journey from birth to death with healing and love, enlightenment as the unfolding iconic narrative. We've created a sanctuary for seeing ourselves and each other as reflections of the divine. Chapel of Sacred Mirrors is a unique pilgrimage place for contemplation and spiritual renewal. Before we built this space, I had a vision that the prostration painting should be the first thing that viewers see when they enter the chapel. We wanted to prepare the viewer to surrender to a higher power. The back energy centers are the so-called will centers. He's bowing to be filled with divine will. There's various helper beings within these flames of purification. And they're from the various wisdom traditions. Barak rode Muhammad to the seventh heaven. Garuda, the transcendental bird of the yogis. Vajra Dakini. Ganesha, prime remover of obstacles in Hinduism. Angel, standard Christian figure. In the shadows here you have the various vices and the obstacles to realization. Greed, hatred, jealousy. addictions, lust, all these things are kind of skittering in the shadows of this figure. They're there, but they're, they're kind of on the run because this person surrendered to a higher power. Next wall, we've got the painting, painting. A painting has a lot of devotional energy poured into it. So there's an energy field that surrounds any work of art. In the background, you see the ghostly figures of art history past. channeling the higher vision into themselves, into their imagination. The painter or any creative person embeds their creative work with all of their states of being. A painting is the repository or a kind of a battery of consciousness. Down below, there is a kind of leering, grotesque entity, basically saying there are many distractions that can keep an artist away from their work, but it's also cautioning them that none of us have very long to live, and so you best get on with it.
surrounding this painting are various drawings. The artist finding a vision in their heart. They think about that vision that comes up to their brain. It's revealed to them the kind of medium that they're going to choose to portray this vision with. It comes to them from a higher source. And then the vision takes form. It's appropriate that this figure is prostrating to these paintings. Two major works by my wife, the artist Alison Gray. One is called Order with Chaos Letters, and the other is called Chaos with Order Letters. They're intensely detailed. One can barely see how she could have painted such fine, fine squares. And then there are the letters. This is her secret, sacred language. They have 20 characters and they're repeated like a mantra through her work. I relate it to the original intentions of the abstract painters early in this century because their intention was to point to a transcendental space. Although hers is a language, she prefers that it have no way to pronounce it. God can't be reduced to concepts. The Chapel of Sacred Mirrors is a womb for the gestation of the awakening human spirit. Our perception acts as an umbilicus, and the art engages us in a conversation that takes us toward our own higher possibility. Along this wall we have the human physiology beginning with the material world. This is a lead figure that I hammered the molecular biochemistry of the body into. It's been wired into the periodic table of the elements. Sandblasted into each little mirror and it's surrounded by the constituents of the material world. Space, time, matter, energy. We're each a bag of chemicals. Here we have the skeletal system, archetypal symbol of death. With its 206 bones, a real masterwork of internal architecture and engineering. system the brain is the anatomical seat of consciousness 
and it sends out millions of threads of the nerves throughout the whole body to every vein and to every muscle, allowing us to feel and sense our world. This is the cardiovascular system. The heart, fantastic fountain of life blood coursing through our veins and arteries. to the lymphatic system. This little green web that goes throughout the body is responsible for our immune system and fighting off the invaders. As we move toward this end of the hall, we complete the phase of the sacred mirrors that focuses exclusively on the anatomical, physical body. We have the viscera, a deep dissection of the male, and the muscle system, a dissection of the pregnant female. Without skin, there's a certain universality to the human anatomy that makes it easier to identify with. Because once we have skin, there's a particular race, gender, all of the sympathies and prejudices arise. This is what the mind does. The mind separates us from others. It says, I'm white, they're black, they're Asian.
in the context of the sacred mirrors, it's inviting us to notice our differences, but also to use it as an opportunity to see ourselves reflected in others. From the socio-political realm, we come to the subtle energetic realm. Now the psychic energy system is the crux of the Sacred Mirror series. And it's a piece that really changed my art. It was the first time I combined the Western analytic X-ray anatomical view of the body with the subtle energetic systems. In the Kundalini yoga system, there are seven energy centers that run along the spine. And they go from a material world to spiritual world hierarchy. The lowest chakra deals with the survival drives, energies rooting you to the world. The second chakra is more the emotions and the sensual energy center, gut feelings. The third chakra is more the mental, rational level. Then we come to a place where things can really change, the heart center, where we begin to transcend the ego. Then we move up to the more spiritual energy centers. In the throat area, you have the possibility of finding your own unique voice. The third eye, where the insights of the imaginal realm come to play. The top energy center is the site of the real goal of yoga. And the ohm represents that primordial sound of connection with spirit. Yoga means union and the whole goal of yoga is to unite with God. The spiritual energy system shows a progressive dissolving of the boundaries between the physical identity and identity with the environment. is based on an experience that my wife and I had back in 1976. It changed our lives. I met my wife while tripping on LSD a year earlier, and we continued to sacramentally ingest the hallucinogenic host and to learn from these experiences. On one of these adventures, 
while lying in bed, listening to music, I became a ball of light. Our shared consciousness was no longer identified with our physical bodies and was moving at tremendous speed through an inner universe of fantastic chains of imagery. And then at a super orgasmic pitch of speed and bliss, we became these individual fountains and drains of light and entered into this all-encompassing energy space. We were all these spheres of light touching each other in this vast omnidirectional network. The energy that was going through all of us and creating all these spheres was the energy of love. It was like a love circuit connecting everyone and everything. And it felt more vitally real than the material world that we know. Beyond time, beyond birth and beyond death, the deepest core level of being, we each felt this state to be our purified essence. the wisdom traditions point us back to the ultimate ground of being that is beyond depiction, but it's the essence of who we really are. Here in the void clear light, I've presented a non-dual perfected state of being which is ultimately boundless and indescribable. Surrounded on the edges by Tibetan-influenced representations of the five elements. Fire. It's the ground of all being and potential of all worlds. At this end of the hall, we have the realm of the spiritual archetypes. Avalokitesvara is the thousand-armed, eleven-headed Buddha of active compassion. And I show the three different levels of manifestation of the Buddha. First, there's the manifestation of the Buddha on the physical plane. Here we see the historic Gautama Prince Buddha surrounded by the disciples or monks. And then the three people who inspired this prince in his quest for enlightenment. The sick man, the old man, and a dead man. The second level of manifestation is the visionary, clear, luminous realm. And this is where Avalokitesvara, this magnificent presence with all his gift-bestowing benefits and delusion-binding instruments, is appearing. psychology is embedded in the Buddha's eleven heads, 
which include Yama, the Lord of Death, directly preceding Amitabha, the Buddha of Boundless Light. All the hands are reaching out to help uplift a suffering world. And there's an eye of unobstructed vision in each palm. The third level of manifestation of the Buddha is the Dharmakaya, the so-called truth realm. This is the universal, omnipresent essence of the Buddha and this ultimate state of clarity and emptiness. Here it's represented by these countless golden Buddhas, each with a mudra or symbolic hand gesture. Also there's the green Tara, this merciful protectress. And this terrifying Buddha of transcendental knowledge called Vajra Bhairava. It's said that his rage is so complete that he destroys even himself. The Bodhisattva, one whose being is enlightenment, has attained the highest state and yet vows to return to the community, to the world, to help relieve suffering and bring benefit, ultimately liberation to all beings. The healing presence of Christ, surrounded by golden light and representing the highest fusion of humanity and divinity. two angels. One holds an open book with the symbol of the Trinity. The other has a sword subduing a serpent, the lower forces of the ego. The angel shows restraint and mercy and compassion by subduing and not slaying the serpent. Sophia, feminine aspect of the Godhead. Here we see Sophia rises out of a field of infinite awareness. Sophia means wisdom. heart there is a global child. The global child represents the potential of the coming phase of human evolution where we identify with the entire planet.
two archetypes of the goddess. Peaceful Madonna and child on one side. Wrathful mother of time Kali in intercourse with corpse Shiva. The Sacred Mirror series opens with the opportunity to see ourselves reflected in the fragmented mirror of the material world. And we close with another actual mirror, but reflecting the unbroken spiritual world. Transformed with our awareness into a world of unity and interrelatedness. The heart is the region where the incarnating transcendental self resides. And carved into the center is the name of the source of the light and self. And the illuminated heart sun radiates a network of light throughout all space. This final mirror is an invitation to reflect on ourselves and others and our entire surroundings as an aspect and expression of God. This is the yellow room, the family room. All the paintings in here are about our closest loving relationships and the subtle energies that surround and connect us. This painting's entitled Praying, and it's about our devotional relationship to the divine. In the halo, there's prayers from many different world wisdom traditions. What I'm trying to point to is that there's a common core and source of light that calls each of us towards spirit. It manifests differently in different world cultures, but the mystical experience of unity with transcendental reality is common to all cultures. This painting is in honor of my relationship with my wife, Allison. My prayers were really answered when I met her 30 years ago. And she is the physical incarnation of God's infinite love. I've tried to indicate something that is beyond the impermanence of the flesh by using these golden flames in the hearts and the minds of the lovers. She inspired the Sacred Mirror series. She named the Sacred Mirrors. All the paintings in here would not exist if it weren't for Allison. So this space, the Chapel of Sacred Mirrors, is really dedicated to our love. A purifying fireball of passion surrounds the embracing couple, welding them together. In the center of the couple, a crystalline Sri Yantra, one of the most ancient tantric symbols, signifies the dynamic balance and interpenetration of opposites. 
astral energy vortexes stream out from the lovers, alerting souls of a possible opportunity for incarnation. The couple is observed by the watchful eyes of birth and death. Infinite love bands flow through the cosmic superimposition of the two polar life energy streams. Passion of Eros, it implies a kind of divine will for human surrender in love to create new life. pregnancy, the soul incarnates by becoming karmically connected with the parents and choosing their sperm and egg. The soul oversees the biomolecular construction of a new body. And barring damaging influences, the new body will be nearly perfect. The embryological bloom of creation, starting as a single-celled zygote, miraculously unfolds into trillions of cells, working harmoniously in the various systems of the body. Here I'm using the glowing lotus as a symbol of this incarnating soul. This is a time of radical transformation for the incarnating soul, as well as for the new parents. There's a karmic connection between mother, father, and child. During the birth process, a tremendous flow of energy courses through the body. It's extremely painful. And when I witnessed my wife giving birth to our daughter, it was beyond any pain I've ever witnessed. And here is shown this orgasmic scream of pain echoing in these silhouettes from the mother's birth to her own death. This is the ultimate act of compassion. The mother's willingness to go through all they have to go through to give birth. The letter symbols in the paintings are the Tibetan syllables Om, Ah, and Hom. And when placed in the head, throat, and the heart, these letters are the seed syllables of all the Buddhas. Thus, this mother is a birthing Buddha. The heart Vajra in the screaming newborn is a symbol of imperishable spirit. And though the umbilical cord will soon be cut, the child will remain connected to the mother through these subtle heart cords. Here we have a depiction of the deep bonding of mother and child. Mother is the first meal. She's the key to life. There's also a nurturing that comes from the envelopment of these beings in a bio-electromagnetic and psycho-spiritual womb of love. This miraculous outpouring of unobstructed love that's channeled through our bodies. Here is a portrait of 
our daughter Xena Lotus. She's pulling out from her center a symbol of primordial purity and perfection. Joyful children radiate this purity and spontaneity, free from conceptual thought. When Allison, Zena, and I pray together, we bow our heads. At that time, I feel an energy weaving through us, binding us together. feel pulled up in prayer to a higher source. So many times, the family bond of love is broken. It's affirming to see it unbroken in this pain. Caring shows the bond between people as we care for each other, preparing for the transition from life into the mystery of death. As we approach our own death, we go through these stages of fear, and anger and bargaining and finally surrender. The ectoplasmic wisp of the soul is extruded out through the top of the head, out through the aperture of Brahman, and into a tunnel of eyes, tunnel of expanded awareness. Our life's journey takes us through so many relationships with family and friends. And just knowing that we're soon going to die should remind us to appreciate every day that we have together and should remind us to let our loved ones know how much they mean to us. Our consciousness leaves our body and enters into a new realm of light and great mystery. did go upon an unclear path. As bone and flesh, alone they went through dark unholiness. A wonder, can I find myself, brought clearing and a voice. Nobly born, seek spiritual dawn. The path is open, it's your choice. Along the path, death mirror of future collapse. Animal powers surround and protect the teacher as a corpse. The teaching is taken. The sun emerges. Book of the dead, direct me, resurrect me. Climbing the mountain, 
slipping and falling, struggling to upper reaches, the path of practice can be long and arduous as it teaches. Holy Book ignites a vision. Seeker becomes seer. Karmic preparation allows the face of the guru to appear. The three worlds are united. From lesser to greater being. Vision spontaneously liberate as vastness nakedly seeing. Awareness supreme and central. Emptiness radiant and clear. Inner sun, outer sun, non-dual in the heart, no desire or fear. Guardians cut loose my empty husk, a human skin pelt of turquoise sky. Reveal the mandala of great perfection, a resplendent Buddha, I. The essential Vajra teaching condensed in a rainbow sun transmits a fractal message. Wake up, everyone. The inspired yogi reaches for universal truth's jewel encoded in a heart drop or a crystalline molecule. Diamond scepter Vajra, pure of stain or ill, now has found its heart home as the engine of creative will, empowered to penetrate others with primordial waves of bliss, shimmering resonant love webs spread out to boundlessness. All beings and things included in the Bodhisattva's vow, therefore a return to the world, but in touch with the timeless now. An elixir of wisdom and compassion does Maitreya bring to all. Everyone is a future Buddha. Listen deep for the inner call. The White Room is about realizing our highest potential through the enlightened mind. The artworks point to the capacity of the enlightened mind to expand our identity beyond the limits of the body, to embrace the entire planet and even the entire cosmos. This painting is entitled Theologue, and it has a very long subtitle. The Union of Human and Divine Consciousness, Weaving the Fabric of Space and Time, in which the self and its surroundings are embedded. Theologue means conversation with God. And this painting was my attempt to portray a high-dose LSD experience. I was staring into deep space and began to notice this electric perspective grid, which seemed to be projecting from my mind. There was a very subtle kind of mountainscape that began to emerge. and then dissolved back into the grid. And this whole experience was so strange and beautiful. 
I didn't know what was happening. It was like, was I getting some transmission from a uh, yogi meditating in the Himalayas, or was it some kind of Jungian archetype of the collective unconscious? I wasn't sure, but what this painting came to mean for me was that we project the space that we're surrounded by. And that's something that we always do. We think that reality is something going on out there, but really it's our projection. It's all a fabrication of our minds. This is what the painting means to me, is just how we create this illusion, this reality that surrounds us. The world soul sculpture points to a state of wholeness, a state of unity in which the psyche is experiencing this mystical, expansive connection with the universal, higher vision. This divine mutant symbolically encompasses all realms of consciousness. The four interlocking faces symbolize the emergence of being from a source that contains and yet transcends all duality. The wrathful figure suggests disease and death, chaos and general negativity. Yet it cradles new life, our hope for the future. heart mirror also suggests the importance of viewing oneself and the world with love and compassion. As we progress through these works, we begin to see past our constricted ego personality and consider our common transpersonal identity. If World Soul was a portrait of our collective self on a planetary level, Oversoul takes us into an experience of cosmic consciousness, a realization of our interconnectedness with a vast galactic web. We couldn't exist at all if the universe hadn't evolved just perfectly the way that it is. We're dependent, codependent, interdependent on the entire vast cosmos. One is about our universal being recognizing our oneness in the eyes of the beloved. The Big Bang exploded 15 billion years ago and spun out into billions of galaxies, each of them with billions of stars. And here we are, an expression of this living, evolving cosmos. And at moments, when you're looking into the eyes of your lover, say, wow, everything is connected and it's perfect just as it is. It's about finding a 
level of non-dual interconnectedness that we share with everyone and everything. Bardo means the between. That state after we die, but before we're reborn. Prisoners of time, compressed and constricted between the symbols of birth and death. This is an opportunity for us to wake up to our true nature, to the nature of the enlightened mind. We reach the termination of our spiral journey inward here in the black room, where we return to the world, but from a transformed perspective. Nuclear crucifixion is based on a vision. was overlooking a city and saw a brilliant blinding flash. And I fell to the ground, looked up, and saw a mushroom cloud. And then crucified Christ appeared. I came to feel that the same kind of ignorance and brutality that would murder a saint would be responsible for causing this kind of mass destruction. Nuclear annihilation is one of the potential disasters that we face and must creatively, peacefully resolve if we're to survive as a human species. This is Mother Earth, represented as the great tree, Gaia. The future generations of humanity are symbolized by a mother nursing in Gaia's cave. A natural cycle of birth, sustenance, death, woven into the tapestry of nature. On one side, she's got everything worth preserving. Our nature, our environment, which is so beautiful and filled with all these amazing creatures.
The tree has her roots in the subatomic, molecular, cellular levels of matter, reaching upward through the oceans, stones, soil, grass, forests, mountains, the air, the atmosphere that nurtures all the plants and creatures. An evolutionary alarm catalyzing the collective will of the people, enabling them to see with eyes of unobstructed vision. On the other side is the impact that humanity is having on the destruction of the web of life, sucking the energy out of Mother Earth. The wasteland of a disposable culture is piled high and seeping into the microgenetic pool, causing disease and defects in the great chain of life. A diseased and demonic phallus has erected structures all over the earth to suck dry Gaia's milk and turn it into power and money. Two paintings in the black room here are about some of the current problems facing humanity. But the central and final painting in the Chapel of Sacred Mirrors is about the possibility of realizing our potential as the cosmic Christ. Christ is the icon of our potential to realize our God nature. And there's pictorial messages of the evolution or ascension of consciousness that are linked with the theme of overcoming or mastering gravity.
painting is also about how we're made up of stories. Millions and millions of ongoing realities are happening simultaneously all over the world, and we're enmeshed in that. Human history is our collective story. Their history is filled with tragedies linked to human greed, ignorance, hatred, visions of slavery, slaughter of Native Americans, the Nazi concentration camps. Even with all those heavy shadows, from prehistory to now, humanity is evolving. From crawling to walking to flying, physically, emotionally, mentally, morally, and spiritually. Beings submerged in the murk of unconsciousness. When consciousness enters matter in the body, we rise. Spirit uplifts matter. There's a figure of grace uplifting the body of humanity. We can see a kind of planetary crucifixion. This is a kind of image of collective suffering. We're waking up to our interconnectedness, but it's through this pain of realizing that we're destroying the web of life. The being that's emerging out of this collective consciousness is symbolized by this green child. And the green child is connected with all the different animals here on Earth and plants and things. We are being blessed, however, by many spirit beings. And above the earth is a cosmic mother. Christ is pointing to the sacred heart as the planet earth.
These little paintings down below are different levels or scales of awareness. this stage of evolution before so we can anticipate problems but there is always this possibility that humanity can mature and become responsible for the way that we treat each other and the way that we treat the planet so that's our hope is that there's an awakening of conscience that these works can serve a voice came to me and said, you can never be lost. When have you ever been apart from me? You can never depart and never return, for we are continuous, indistinguishable. <laughs> 